Mr. Arthur, I remember back in the last campaign, um, I think President Biden promised to give illegal immigrants all the free medical care. Uh, could you comment on that? I, I mean, I've talked to Border Patrol agents uh, when I've come across here in the past. Uh, are people coming here at all for medical care, or is that an expense that the U.S. taxpayer has to uh, deal with? Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. As I mentioned before, uh, one of the uh, uh, biggest issues that we have that we will face in years to come from this surge that we've seen in migrants uh, has been an increase in the number of unauthorized foreign nationals who are accessing the U.S. medical care system. Uh, people criticize it all the time, but can certainly understand it. We have the best health care system in the world. Uh, I'm born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. Saudi sheiks come to Johns Hopkins to get treatment. And the fact is that people will come to this country, attracted to this country, by the opportunity to get free education, free health care. Yeah, I've heard they come here solely. There are people coming here solely for the medical care. I need it would not surprise me. And in fact, when I was a young trial attorney, I had a case involving a woman from Ethiopia who would uh, fly to San Francisco on a tourist visa. She would go to the local charity hospital. She would give birth. She was pregnant. She would go down to the State Department office on Mission Street, get a visa or get a passport for her child and fly back. Uh, so and uh, Chairman Biggs had mentioned the situation in Yuma. Yuba is very unique because it's very easy to access the United States across the Morelos Dam in what we call the Yuma Gap. Uh, and so consequently, women will show up uh, in uh, 38 to 40 weeks of uh, pregnancy. They will come across directly, which is part of the reason why there's such a high uh, uh, number of uh, migrants, recently apprehended migrants, showing up at the Yuma Hospital. Okay. Um Sheriff Daniels, I know a lot of times this is perceived to be migrants coming here either from Mexico or, or uh, Central America. Could you tell me where you've found migrants coming from, say, in the last year? We, we on the southwest border, I believe it was over 157 countries were uh, encroached upon our border last year on the southwest border. That's a lot of countries. We've seen them all the way up to Iraq in our county. In fact, to give you a story, we had two Iraqis walking on the east side of our county, uh, called in. We, we checked it out. Uh, they both said they were lost. Well, they weren't the typical, well, we see people that are lost in the desert. No, uh, they weren't dressed for it. They didn't look like it, and they didn't look tired. But uh, their, their statement to us, they were legally in the country, but they were lost here, and they were from Iraq. Okay, you sometimes hear that the, uh, or I've heard the migrants are not necessarily poor. Do either one, any one of the three of you want to comment on that? There was a uh, situation uh, that uh, a senator from Oklahoma had actually observed uh, in Yuma uh, involving a woman who was uh, wearing a very fashionable outfit, and a staffer said, she's wearing Versace. And he was like, who's Versace? Uh, had no idea. They had to put a uh, weight limit on the amount of baggage that Border Patrol buses would carry from Yuma uh, to the Border Patrol Processing Center because people were bringing entire wardrobes of clothing. These are outliers, uh, Mr. Chairman, but it's a real situation, and many of the people who are coming to this country are actually doing pretty well where they are. They just want to do better here. That's what I've heard. Um, we talked about, I can't remember if it was you or, or Sheriff Daniels talked about the number of migrants who are dying every year, and uh, at least when I was in the San Diego sector, we were told that more people were drowning on the Mexican side than the American side trying to come here. But is there a trend on the number of people dying trying to get here in this country? Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Hello, hello. There we go. Mr. Chairman, last year, due to the fact of death on our southwest border, uh, to include the deaths we're seeing here in Cochise County, the National Sheriff Association, uh, we put out a a sample photo album of all the migrants, as I believe it was over 1,300 died under this administration that had died of horrific deaths of exposure on U.S. soil that we sent to every sheriff in this country to bring awareness that sheriffs, get your head up and let's unite on this. And, um, but we're seeing historical numbers. I mean, I just saw a thing the other day where just the, with the amount of heat we're seeing on the Southwest board and the amount of deaths we're seeing on that. So again, it's, it's inhumane to say the least. Okay, Mr. Ladd, uh, final question for you. 
Uh, you're, you've obviously had your farm on the border for many, many years. Could you comment on the presence of the Border Patrol today compared to, again, say, three or four years ago? Oh, yeah. It, it's about 25 uh, percent of what we normally have. Um, the Brian Terry station is somewhere around 400 agents typically, and probably 200 of them are detailed out, and the rest of them are processing people. Uh, so they take it, they pull them off the border. And so, so you've seen what we have heard, and that is the sea of people coming here means so many of the Border Patrol agents who are Border Patrol agents because they like guarding the border are stuck doing paperwork because of this other sea of people. Is that, that, is that what you a, saw? Absolutely right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before you uh, yeah. move on, if I could just uh, – talk about a point that you had made uh, and that Sheriff Daniels had made about the large number of deaths. Deaths are sky high. Another thing that is sky high is Border Patrol searches and rescues. Border Patrol agents are literally saving tens of thousands of people, exponentially higher numbers. I just feel that it's appropriate to bring that up. They will put their lives into danger uh, in the uh, Sonoran Desert, in the Rio Grande. Floods come up all of a sudden, flash floods, a hundred miles down river will send water down. They will jump into that water to save children. Migrants will throw children into the water knowing that agents will go after those children and that uh, they'll be able to get, or uh, smugglers will do that, knowing that they'll be able to get back across the river. Right, so the American citizen has done a tremendous job here, putting gallons of water out in the middle of the desert, hoping people don't dehydrate. Congressman Biggs. 